Let me take you on a journey through the entire process of quality reporting from data collection all the way to the final reporting output. As a quality engineer, you know how important it is to compile and send accurate quality metrics to your organization or customers on a regular basis. However, quality reporting can be a real pain point for quality departments as I have mentioned in my earlier video on the time-saving tips for quality reporting. You can check out the link below. But don't worry, by the end of this video, you will have all the steps you need to create a streamlined process for quality reporting. Let's go through what are the processes that is required from converting a data that is collected to a reporting output. The first step is actually the whole data collection process of understanding customer's requirement. And next is that to collect the data. And then this will be followed by analyzing data, summarizing the data, and also action plan required if there is quality issues to eliminate or to reduce the potential problem. And lastly, of course, is the report output that every stakeholder is waiting in anticipation weekly for it to come out and to check what is the current trend now. Let's start from understand the customer's requirement. It will not be meaningful to have a report if we do not understand what the customers require. We could be reporting something that which customers are not interested. So first of all, that we will need to review the specifications and customers requirement and understand what is their application environment, which will lead to what they really care about in your products and align those products critical parameters to the customer's requirement. I do have a video on how to convert customer's requirement into critical parameters and I will put it in the link below and also at the end of this video. If you find this video informative, please give it a thumbs up and consider subscribing to my channel for more valuable insights and updates in manufacturing supplier quality hacks to achieve consistently good quality products by subscribing. You will be the first to know when I post new content. Upon understanding your customer's requirement, then you can craft your data collection process accordingly in the way that you want the data to tell you about the insights of the process. You come with an objective of what do you want the data to tell you? The first step is that we will need to understand what type of information that we would like to collect. Normally, in the manufacturing process, it would be the defect rate, the type of defect where the defect gets rejected in the process steps, maybe the product type, the timeline that happens, such as in what time, what date, the traceability, the unique part number or the unique identification or serial numbers of the product, and it could be also other information that is required. The second one is the current information. Here, it means that what is the current failure mode that you have assigned to your product? Is there too many defects under others category? I have a slide down later on to explain more about this item and also how to handle this kind of situation. And lastly, we would like to define the role and responsibility that who is in charge of what data and also ensure that we restrict data key in with a pull down list to ensure a correct or prevent, minimize the mistakes of wrong key in of the data. And lastly, get rid of the information you do not require. Suppose you want to collect data which shows the reject rate of an assembly line and what are the top failure symptoms, the failure cause, which could be process related handling or incoming materials, etc. Therefore, 
you must create a table according to what you want. In order to do so, you will need to put in all the information, which is known as columns, that means the column headings, or the field. If you have a more automated data collection process, uh, a table, eventually they will pull and become a data table. So here you will need a column heading of a work week, the field, date, the product, the part number, the line reported failure, the product serial number, the field at which stations, the verification results, and also the failure classifications and the failure cost. Here stated the description of each of these fields, the source, where you get it from, and how you input the data. This is a very important step. Another tip is that if, let's say, your data is handwritten, you can actually download a phone app's call office, which is available in the Play Store, that is able to convert handwriting image into a table, which is in Excel format. Therefore, you don't have to manually key in every data that is in the handwritten format. Are you ready to take your manufacturing supplier quality engineering career to the next level? Look no further. I am excited to introduce to you my comprehensive and affordable courses available on Udemy. Whether you are preparing for a job interview or looking to advance your skills, my courses on supplier quality engineering, audits, quality tools on NSA, SPC, FMEA, Lean Six Sigma, problem solving, specialized process control audit in metal stamping, plastic injection molding, printer circuit board assembly, spray painting, and more have got you covered. Each course comes with complete downloadable guides, templates, or checklists that you can immediately apply to your job. Don't miss out on this opportunity to invest in your career. Unlock all of my courses on Udemy for only $12.99. If you are using a mobile device, simply tap on More to review the special rate course link. Click on the link to view over 15 courses in multiple quality areas offer. For desktop user, you can scroll down and click on the link to download the course list. You can then click in the list to get the special offer rate. This is what the final tables looks like, which consists of the 10 columns that we talked about just now, or few. One is work week, field date, products, part number, line reported failures, what are they, the observed failures, the product, unique serial number for traceability, field at which stations, the verification results, the field classifications according to the verification results, and also the failure costs. These are the columns where possible you can put in a list down, drop down menu where you can choose the options directly from here instead of keying in where your data will look more clean and also it will help in the final analysis as well to prevent all those mistakes and also many people will have different definition for the same kind of a reject symptom. Remember I stated about current information. I have seen cases where the failure, let's say in 2018, we have a classifications of cosmetics assembly process, cannot charge and also parts broken for a battery pack and others is the last defect in the Parato. However, over the years, process improvement has taken place and most of this top defect has already gone. Therefore, others becomes a top Parato and it is time. Actually, you have to classify others so that it will become more obvious in your report and you will know that specifically what are the failure modes or the failure symptoms that you will need to work on or else you will end up as others in the top Parato and also you will invite a lot of questions from your stakeholders. Once we have the data collected, 
it is time for us to analyze and even summarize the data. One of the neat tools that actually you can use is Microsoft Power BI, which comes with a work account. And it helps to automate the process and it has an auto update features. That means once you set up your dashboard in the Power BI for the data visualization correctly, it will auto run with updated report either weekly or monthly, depends on what is your interval of reporting. You can also use a lot of data automations that's available either in Excel or also in Power BI that is able to pull data from different sources and merge them together. For example, the table I showed you just now is about the failure data, but you would like to know the reject rate, then you will need to know the build quantity, which is in another table, another format. Um, with a certain merging of a data source, you will be able to merge them together and get your reject rate. There are also a lot of YouTube videos which shows how to use Power BI that you can refer to. A quality reports must come with action plans to address the quality issues and also to improve the quality. Therefore, quality engineers must learn to distinguish between special cause and common cause failure in a product. Common cause failure is resolved through a systematic problem solving approach such as Six Sigma. Give a time frame as it is a project approach to address those common cause variation. If not, every week your customer will be coming after you to questions that why it is not resolved and the time frame has to be reasonable. It will also make it easier for you to drive for actions and work with cross-functional teams by having a timeline to check on the progress. Learn to make customers understand that magic do not happen overnight. Whereas special cost variation is something that could not be tolerated and it has to be addressed immediately. Normally, you will use a 8D approach or corrective action approach immediately have action to eliminate special costs. A more detailed video on the special costs and common cost variations is available at the end of this video and at the link below. This is to show you the data visualization or known as dashboard in a reporting format which Power BI is capable of producing. However, at this moment, Power BI still does not have the capability to collect data accurately yet. It is actually easy to learn how to use data visualization software where automation can take place to transform the raw data. However, the most challenging part is the foundation work of data collection and ensuring the data accuracy where it can be used to transform into a process insights and target the right improvement effort. Do invest your time to build a good data collection system. And I can assure you, once you have mastered it, reporting will be an easy task. Please do share with me your reporting problem in the comments section, and I shall take a look at it and see if I can help you to resolve some of your problem. I hope you found today's video helpful in gaining a better understanding of manufacturing, supplier and quality engineering. I love to hear your thoughts on what topics you like me to cover. So feel free to share your comments below. If you find this video valuable, please share it with others who might benefit from it too. Thank you for watching and I can't wait to bring you a more insightful content in my future videos.